what they want to do here in the last minute and 24 of this first half. It was a really nice job there by McKenzie as you in the cutting Farley. Farley really hasn't yet. They're still within five points yes. with a minute 24 to play, and Max Ocolo has missed quite a bit of the first half. Not sure the exact minutes, but he's been on the bench with three fouls, was on the bench with two fouls, and so their leading scorer at 13.5 points has spent the majority of the game on the bench. He's got four, but not nearly as much as he might have if he were in the game. A nice give underneath to Vaughn. He misses the turnaround jumper in the lane. Farley makes the pass up ahead to Maccabee, who drives in, puts it up no good, follow up and in his own shot. So... Maccabee with his sixth point of the half. It's 23 to 20, under a minute to play. Great job by Maccabee. Brendan Haley can't be happy with that. There were two Sal's defenders there waiting for the rebound to come down. Maccabee split both of them and came up with it. Cohill back in the game after that timeout. So he and Wallace are playing catch up beyond the three point lane. They get it to Paul Brown, who hands it back to Wallace, and Brendan Haley wants him. Looks like to play for the last shot. 20, 34 seconds left. Sally's with a 23-20 lead. They led 14-8 at the end of the first quarter, led by as many as 10 in the second quarter. But the Friends went on a six-point run and now have scored the last four points of the game to pull within 23-20. 17 seconds left to play. Davis is coming out to cover Wallace. Wallace dribbling at half court between his legs. 11 seconds to play. Ball Brown comes out to set a pick. And Debbie moves out to pick up Wallace and is going to pick up a foul. And that's going to send Wallace to the foul line to shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. That's the second foul for Dan and Debbie. So foul trouble for friends with a Colo and Aldridge with three. And now a Debbie with two. Pastore's going to check in for Sally's. Jack Brown is going to check out. And that's just a real foolish foul by Debbie. It almost – two of Ocolo's fouls where he had bad defensive positioning. It was the same thing there for Debbie. He didn't just cut off Michael Wallace. He ran right into him. So a little lapse in concentration there with only eight seconds left. Wallace misses the front end of the one-on-one -on -one off the back of the rim. He's now one for three from the free throw line. Farley's got it. Time running out. A three-pointer by Davis in and out, and the buzzer goes off. And so – that's going to bring us to the end of the first half here, Marty. 23-20 to 20 Sally's. What looked at one point like could be a blowout has turned into a very competitive game at the half. It really has. I think if you look at the keys to both teams' games, they're very good defensively. Both teams have to go into the locker room thinking they did a great job shutting down the other team's stars. I mean, Akolo couldn't get anything going. He had the foul trouble. Uh, Jack Brown has been almost completely shut down by the defense for friends who have been getting out on the three-point line. So neither one of Sally's uh, – top scorers or friends top scorers have been able to get anything going so really good job defensively and friends has done just enough offensively with their stars out to stay in this ball game all righty we're going to send it back to ronnie vickers in the studio for our fox sports 1290 halftime report presented by ibew local 313 once again the halftime score silesianum 23 wilmington friends 20 you're listening to the high school basketball game of the week on fox sports 1290 and watching it live on 302 sports Hi, this is Tom Williams. All right, Ronnie, thank you, sir. Thanks, Ron. to Merrill. Unique image, open for business in Wilmington, Delaware in Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom 
on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvement's pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. Welcome to Hooters. Have a seat wherever you like. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters Wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. and began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 45 Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, 
windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Unique image you envision, we create. Unique image open for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 19... On a six-point run followed by a four-point run to pull within 23-20 to 20, heading into the locker room. Leading scorer for Silesianum was Paul Brown with seven points, comes in averaging 10.5. He's coming off that 21-point performance against Mount Pleasant in their win Tuesday night. Darnell Vaughn with five, Mike Wallace for five. The leading scorer on the team, Jack Brown, held to just three points. He made a three-pointer to open up the second quarter for his only points of the game. Luke Pastore, two points, and Brett Henshey, one point off the bench as well. Quentin McAbee leads all scorers for Wilmington Friends with six points. A surprise since he only averages 2.5 points coming in to the game, but a nice job by him nonetheless. Miles McCoy and Max Ocolo both with four points, William Davis and Tim Farley with two. Foul trouble for Wilmington Friends. Max Acolo with three. Donovan Aldridge with three. Dan and Debbie with two. None, none really for Silesianum. Kevin, or sorry, Chris Cohill with two fouls. Jack Brown, Rasheen Calk, and Paul Brown with one foul apiece. So, Marty, I think it's going to be important for both teams to get off to a good start. Sally's to show Wilmington friends that they are the better team. Not that they are, but yes. that's what they want them to think, having jumped out to that 20 to 10 point lead. Friends wanting to prove to the home crowd, it's a great crowd here, to, that they're going to stay in this game and have a shot to win it because they are on the bubble come playoff time. They are. Now they're in an interesting situation where they have two of their stars in foul trouble. So it's going to be up to guys like Quentin McAbee, uh, Miles McCoy, McKenzie to come up with some big shots in this half. The other point of that is, is they're going to have to keep up that defensive intensity that held Jack Brown and company uh, and his brother to only 10 points in the first half. It's going to be Sally's ball. Cohill, Jack Brown, Wallace in the starting lineup along with Paul Brown and Vaughn. They're moving right to left as we see it in the navy blue, that dark navy blue jerseys and pants with the gold trim. Acolo is in despite having the three fouls. He's joined by Farley. Also in is McCoy and Davis. And Maccabee rounds out the five starters here in the second half. Wallace gets it. He drives the baseline right around to Debbie. Puts it up on the left side with his right hand for good. That baseline has been there all game long. It's the one weakness is friends defense. They give up that baseline. That time Wallace patiently waited, took advantage of it, drives in for the easy bucket. So Sally strikes first here in the third quarter, taking a 25-20 lead as seven minutes ticks on the clock. A jump shot inside by Davis for friends is off the back of the rim. Wallace comes down with it for Sally's quickly across the half court. He gets it over to Jack Brown. Had the shot. Davis came out on, decided to pass on him. Vaughn tries to lob it inside, gets tipped away nicely by the defense, but Vaughn chases it down. He gives it back to Cohill, who looked like he wanted to take an <laughs> NBA three. Thought better of it. Gets it to Wallace. Wallace inside to Vaughn. Vaughn trips. Not sure how that's not a traveling violation. Instead, they call a jump ball. I'm not sure how it ended up being a jump ball <laughs> because then it went to Quentin McAbee, who was sitting alone on the floor. And the referee all of a sudden called for a jump ball. I'm not sure if he lost track of where the players were on the floor or if he's saying there was an out of bounds. But 
An odd call nonetheless ends up being Friends' possession. Quaker Friends and head coach Chris Leffler not happy with the call. <laughs> Brendan Haley just sitting there with his arms folded knowing he got away with one there. Yes. So Quaker ball trailing 25-20, 6.42 to play here in the third quarter. McAbee's got it at the top of the key. He leads the Quakers with six points. He gets it back over to Acolo. Farley has it in his hand, guarded by Jack Brown. A jump shot from the foul line. They're going to call the foul on Jack Brown on the hand check. That's going to be Brown's second, the team's first here in the second half. And Tim Farley, his own shots. He's used to coming off screens. He just hasn't been able to do it here tonight. Average is 12 points. That's Farley. Only has two points, as you pointed out. Davis has it. He dribbles a uh, hard power dribble to his right, backs it back out, gets it to Farley. Cohill knocks it away, and that's got to be an offensive foul, and it is against Farley. He wrapped his elbow around Cohill to get around him. And that feels like a, a frustration foul for Farley there. As you said, he kind of wrapped his left arm completely around Chris Cohill's head. Chris Cohill is a buggy defender. He will get all over you. He will use his hands, but he does it within the letter of the law, and it's very frustrating for opposing offenses. The friends is still scoreless here in the second half. A nice dish inside from Wallace to Paul Brown on the baseline. The left-handed layup is good. Wallace, a great job. Friends defense fell asleep a little bit. He had a perfect line to Paul Brown underneath for the easy bucket. Nine points for Paul Brown, just one shy of his season average as the Souths lead 27 to 25, 53 to go. Friends has yet to score. Davis drives in, puts up a right-handed layup. No good. Acolo tips it in. And again, a great job by the guards. Both of these teams' guards are fantastic rebounders. It's something Sally's is going to have to adjust to. Brendan Haley not happy. Every time a shot goes up on both sides, both teams' guards are crashing the boards. Great job by friends there to come up with the bucket. Okolo, even with the three fouls, not afraid to mix it in underneath. And a three-pointer by Jack Brown. A quick answer to those two points. And McKenzie just can't leave him. Uh, excuse me, Davis just can't leave him alone on the wing. He gets rid of the ball so quickly, you, by the time you get out to him, the ball's out of his hand. 30-22, to 22, Sally's with an eight-point lead as we approach the five-minute mark here in the third quarter. Sally's remains in that man-to-man -man defense. Davis drives in again, misses again, but this time he's fouled, and he'll head to the line and shoot two. Davis is one of those kids who looks like he's kind of taken it upon himself to create some offense tonight with Farley and uh, uh, Colo in trouble, uh, not being able to get anything going for Farley, and, of course, the foul trouble for Colo and Aldridge. So a nice job by William Davis trying to get something to happen the sophomore. And so Brendan Haley is going to take a 30-second timeout. Didn't like something he saw on that last defensive possession. And, you know, for the most part, Brendan Haley's one of those guys you wouldn't want to play poker with because he almost <laughs> always just has that same look, the arms crossed on the sideline. I mean, there are times we can get going. I've seen him uh, against my uh, my St. E. Vikes a few times over the years. But for the most part, Brendan Haley, a guy who stays really calm. And that's one of the things I think that – that you know, it, it's kind of one of those by osmosis. His team remains calm in pressure situations. It's why they're so good, why they don't get down when they're down by a lot of points. I think that flows from the top down. So a nice job by uh, Brennan Haley. He saw something, as you say, he didn't like here. Sally's has an eight-point lead. He wants to make sure they don't let friends back into this too quickly. I think one of the things he didn't like is that two possessions in a row, William Davis went right down the yes, middle of the did. lane and had layups. Missed one, was fouled on the other. Makes the first of two foul shots here to pull friends within 30 to 23, 5.05 left to go. And Davis, who got only his second start of the season, his second start of his career, averages six points a game, has three. This one rattles around and goes in. So four points for the sophomore guard, who has played a lot of minutes, but getting the start because Carlin Bestgrone is not playing tonight yes. because he injured his leg in practice earlier this week. 30-24, Sally's with a six-point lead, under five to play. Wallace drives in. They're moving right to left. Paul Brown gets it, fakes it on Acola. Acola does a nice job playing defense. Paul Brown is in the high-low block. He dishes it to a cutting Wallace. Wallace drives in, scoops it up with the right hand. No good. Follow-up by Brown. Paul Brown, that is, with his 11th point of the night. Fantastic job by Paul Brown. He's another one of those kids who has a strong motor. He wasn't able to get the shot he wanted. Stayed inside, picked up the offensive rebound for the two. 32-24, 4.30 to play in the third quarter. 
Driving into the basket is McAbee. He dishes it out to Farley in the left corner. Long on the three-pointer. Wallace comes down with it for Sally's. Gets it quickly across the half court. Gives it to Jack Brown on the right wing. Short on the three-pointer. Brown fouls it in. Runs over Davis. It ends up in the hands of Cohill. He gives it over to Paul Brown on the left wing. Back out top to Wallace. Wallace with the three-pointer is off to the left. And coming down with the rebound is McAbee. Great chances there for Salesian. Just not able to come down with it. A good job by friends to finally get the rebound there before the Sallies could put one home. Pump fake by Ocolo, drives in, puts it up, block, gets his own rebound, and puts it in. I'm so impressed with the stick to of some of these kids. Ocolo is one of them. He's playing with three fouls. He still keeps fighting inside. That time fought off three Sally's defenders before he get, uh, got the bucket. You know, sometimes if you play like you're in foul trouble, that's when you pick up yes. the fouls, and he's <laughs> playing hard. They get it inside to Brown, low block, layup no good. Nice defense by Ocolo, comes up with a rebound, gets it up to Farley. Friends trails 32-26, has the ball. Farley drives in, puts it up with the right hand. Brown, Jack that is, with a nice defense, comes down with a rebound. It gets swatted away, and a late wow. call there. The foul's going to be called on Farley, and, and actually it looked like they called the foul one slap late. Yes, you know what they did? Uh, Jack Brown actually put his hands to his face as if he'd been hit. Once the referee saw that is when he called the foul, so I credit that foul. Jack Brown has got a smile on his face now. Kind of uh, get yep. the, the Academy Award there for the acting. I have no doubt he got hit. I don't know if he got hit enough for the uh, <laughs> right. sort of he got hit by a sniper shot right. there and the way he reacted to that, but a really nice job to, to get the foul call. Davis checks in, or I'm sorry, out, because Aldridge checks in. Aldridge with those three fouls. Sally trying to work it underneath, and a foul is going to be called against Maccabee. They tried to get it underneath to Henchy, who did a nice job posting up underneath. For Maccabee, that's going to be just his first foul team's third in the second half jack brown off the inbound three-pointer from the right baseline no good Acolo rips down the rebound gets it out to aldridge 32 to 24 sal's with the lead wellington fresh with the ball moving left to right sal's in a zone i'm sorry a man-to-man -man defense as the quakers in their all-white uniforms and the blue trim they get it underneath to Acolo. he can't make a move on henchy nice defense there by henchy coming off the bench for sal's they kick it back out to farley Henchy now covering Ocolo again. And Farley with a nice move, puts up the three. Bat hard off the backboard. Coming down with it is Cohill. He whips it ahead to Jack Brown. It's going to be tipped out of bounds. They're looking for help, and they say it's going to be off Farley. It'll stay Sally's ball. Checking in for Wilmington Friends is Dan Adebi, the big center. He's going to check in for Ocolo. I imagine they're going to try to get through the rest of this quarter with Ocolo so he can come back full force with those 3,000 in the fourth quarter. Well. Boy, in the nightmare game for Tim Farley continues. Just hasn't been able to get anything going. Inbounds to Cohill in the right corner. He gets it to Henji on the right wing. Jack Brown has it in the top of the key. He's only got two three-pointers, so well below his 12-point average. Henzi drives in out of control, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Henchy. Yeah, and Henchy was going to be fine there until he turned his body. Once he turned his shoulder and went into the defender, if you don't see where you're going and you run into the defender, you're going to get called for the offensive foul. And so he tried to get rid of it in time and just didn't, so a little out of control. is going to be his first, the team's third. Wilmington friends ball. Sally's with a 32-26 to lead, a little full court press here by Sally's. Look like they're just trying to bother friends, yes. not necessarily trying to get the ball. Farley has it. He gets it up to Aldridge. Aldridge fires from three on the left. He's about two feet short. A battle underneath for it as Farley went after it. Tips it back in. Gets it to Cohill. Cohill ahead to Wallace. Goes between the legs. Aldridge comes over to play defense. A wide open Wallace on the right wing. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Sally's a great job of moving the ball around the perimeter. Wallace and company are feeling it out there now as they build this lead up to nine. And a, just an atrocious job so far offensively by friends in this quarter. And they're going to call a reach in on Jack Brown. He doesn't like the call, arguing with the official, but it's going to be a foul nonetheless. That's going to be his third foul. So Jack Brown with just six points. Just picked up his third foul with a minute 48 to play in the third quarter, and he's going to check out. Checking in for him is going to be the freshman, Rasheen Kalk. And a really nice job by Michael Wallace to go over there and pull Jack Brown away from the official. Just in case, Jack Brown wasn't going to get teed up, but just in case, a nice job to make sure his teammate keeps his temper in check. Well, because if you do get teed up, now you got four fouls. There you go. So it was a nice job, as you pointed out. Nice move inside by Farley off the glass, a little bit hard. Coming down with it is Cohill for Sally's. He's going to scamper across the midcourt line over right in front of his head coach and pull it back out. A nine-point lead now for Sally's, 35-26. A minute 30 to play here in the third quarter. Wallace penetrating a little bit. Farley does a nice job on defense. Henji has it and 
called for traveling. That quick step you see a lot of times in high school basketball. Yeah, I don't think I've gotten through a game in the last three years where we haven't seen one of those quick step walks called. It's just one of those things. You shuffle that foot just a little bit before the ball hits the floor, and the referees have been trained to pick up on that. So a uh, good call by the officials. Paul Brown checks in for Vaughn for Sally's. Max Acolo and William Davis in for friends. Tim Farley and Dan Debbie check out. Davis has it, drives right down the lane again, goes up to the layup, hits the bottom of the rim, and it's going to go to the foul line and shoot two. So three times now Davis has gotten the ball and gotten to the rim. You know, I think the key is Davis needs help. I mean, Davis is doing everything offensively to try to get some points on the board. Farley has just struggled mightily this half. He's now out. Aldridge, his last three-pointer was an air ball. Farley's last three-pointer hit nothing but the backboard. So, Davis is a kid who's, who's really trying as he hits the first free throw there, but he's going to need some help. They have a lineup in there that is not used to playing together all at the same time, but somebody has to step up offensively. Three for three from the line. The announcers jinx as the fourth foul shot goes hard off the back of the rim. It'll stay 35-27. to 27. Wallace quickly across half court, goes between the legs, hands it off to Cohill. Cohill gets it to Calk, the freshman at the top of the key. He dishes it back outside. Cohill ends up with it back at the – Left wing, they get it out to the circle to Wallace, takes one dribble and gets it out to Paul Brown who pops out. Henji gets it back over to Wallace. Paul Brown at the top of the key. He can shoot a three-pointer, but doesn't look like he has any interest in that. Hands it off to Wallace. Wallace being guarded by McCoy, drives in, tries to dish it off to Paul Brown. The ball's on the ground with three players, and they're going to call a jump ball. It's going to stay Sally's ball. Yeah, Wallace made the decision way too late to try to feed that off to Paul Brown. He ended up being only about two feet away from Brown when he tried to feed him the pass. By that point, there were just way too many arms and legs in the mix there. There were two friends defenders, and uh, they knocked it away. I'm surprised. Henshaw's actually setting up a good position on the right side when Sally's comes down the floor. Wallace has just not been able to get the ball to him. Be interesting to see if they try to go there. He is backing his man down on the block. Sally's ball. Wallace drives in. He gets it over to Paul Brown. There's that three we were talking about from the right corner. No good. 34 seconds left. Henshaw really does a nice job running oh. it down. Lobs it up to Paul Brown. Misses the layup with 28 seconds left. The friends have it, 35-27. Dan and Debbie checked in in that last buzzer, and it was Akola who went out. Akola, of course, has the three fouls. He's not on the floor. Aldridge, who also has three fouls for friends, not on the floor either. 13 seconds left to play. Friends looks like they're going to hold it for the last shot. They trail 35-27. to 27. They work it over to Maccabee. Maccabee has it. He gets it up top to Davis, and Davis is fouled. And he's going to go to the line. Are they in the one-on-one? -on -one? Not yet. And, you know, we use the old adage, a freshman mistake. That's a freshman mistake by Rasheen Kalk. There was absolutely no need to block there. They had friends stuck out on the perimeter. They weren't able to penetrate the ball at all. All, all Kalk had to do was keep moving laterally. Instead, he came forward a little bit, picks up the foul. And so with three seconds left to play, Davis is going to inbound it. And he does to get it to Farley. Farley, a pump take, gets Wallace in the air, fires from three. NBA range, no good. The buzzer goes off. That's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. Your score, Silesian 35, Wilmington Friends 27. You're listening to Fox Sports 1290 Game of the Week and watching it live on 302 Sports. It's hard to miss all the TV.
The end of the third quarter, mainly behind the scoring of Mike Wallace, who had five in the third period, Paul Brown with four, and brother Jack Brown with three. John Busby along with Marty Sheehan, and we pass it in here to start the fourth quarter. That was Davis passing it back to teammate Miles McCoy, who was on the floor along with Farley and McKenzie, and Nicolo underneath put one up strong against Brown, and Brown blocks it away. Paul Brown does such a nice job going up vertically. That time he made sure he didn't put his body into a colo, forced a colo into a tough shot. Calk and Henji are on with Wallace and Paul Brown and also Vaughn for the Sallies. Actually, Vaughn is not, excuse me, Calk is on. Henji with a nice right hook inside, just short, comes down in the hands of Davis. He gets it into the hands of Farley, moving left to right, and he finds a wide open McCoy underneath. I'm sorry, that's McKenzie who missed the reverse layup, so an opportunity there lost it, for friends. It really was. The pass was just thrown a tick too late. McKenzie ended up being under the basket when he caught the ball, just no doing. Cohill, a three-pointer from the right corner is short. Akolo comes down with it. Brown tried to grab it from him. That's Paul Brown, but friends keeps a hold of it, moving left to right, 35 to 27. 6.55 to play here in the game. Davis again gets to the rim. A beautiful block and a defensive move by Henji prevents him from laying it in. Checking in for the Quakers is Aldridge and also Maccabee. Having a seat is McCoy and McKenzie. Jack Brown checks in along with Vaughn. Henji's going to have a seat, as is Cohill for the Souths. 35 to 27. Farley is going to inbound it underneath his own basket to the right as we see it. And he gets it right underneath to Okola, who lays it in for two. A great look right there. Paul Brown just falling asleep at the wheel there in front of Okolo. And, and a really easy two points for friends. Some, two of their easiest points all night. 35 to 29. Wallace drives right through the defense and lays it in with a left. Wallace hung in the air there. Looked like he was going to dump it off with his right hand. Switched it to his left, up and in. Really nice job there. Move there by Mike Wallace. 12 points for Wallace. Double his season average as the Sals lead 37 to 29. Looked like it might have been a held ball there. Instead, Wilmington Friends has it back. Davis has it. He looks to a cutting Maccabee. Instead, he gives it to a Colo at the top of the key, being guarded by Brown. It's tipped away nicely by Calk for Sallies. Vaughn has it two on three. Puts it up with his left, and it's good. Great job with the left hand there by Calk. Down on the offensive end, Friends just fell victim. Sallies uses great help defense. If you feel like you're isolated, you're not. A Colo drives baseline and hits a nice cutting Quentin Maccabee for two. And it's 39 to 31. So a beautiful pass and catch there. Maccabee converts to pull his team within eight. 552 to play and a quick timeout. I think it was Wilmington Friends it that was. took that timeout. You know, every time it feels like Sally's is going to pull away here, Wilmington Friends pulls off a score, uh, sort of a rabbit out of the hat. Uh, Davis has done a, a nice job that time. Maccabee with a great look to Okolo. Okolo's done a really nice job, I will say, in this half of playing with the three fouls. He has yet to pick up number four. Uh, neither does Aldridge, for that matter. I'd be surprised if uh, we don't see him try to make a move at some point. He's a kid that from the three-point line, I've seen him get hot a couple times. He had a game against Tower Hill were on three consecutive possessions. He hit three three-pointers in a row. So France does have the players that can heat up, but tonight it just hasn't been there. And especially uh, Tim Farley and Okolo are their go-to guys and just hasn't happened for them tonight. Speaking of Okolo, he is on our schedule poster, which was designed by Incognito Productions. They're the premier sports filming company in Delaware, shooting, editing, and creating sports films for teams and individuals. Incognito has you covered. Head to nknfilms.com today. 39-31, Silesia Adam, the number five team in the state with an eight-point lead. They've got a state tournament berth locked up, playing to try to get a first round by. Brendan Haley said if they win two of their next three, they're pretty much guaranteed that by. Wilmington Friends, on the other hand, fighting for their playoff lives. And tipped out of bounds right in front of the Sally's bench. It's going to remain Silesia Adam Ball. 5.43 to play. John Busby along with Marty Sheehan, Ronnie Vickers back in our studio. The 302 Sports crew here working the live stream for you. 5.43 to play here at the Wilmington Friends School. A very nice crowd. They've got one set of bleachers on the side. We're sitting atop of them and there's not many seats available. Trouble getting it in. Jack Brown in a five-second violation. Brendan Haley tried to call a timeout, but it was after the whistle had already blown. That was just a great job by the Friends defense. Sally's had their players scattering all over the place. I think Brendan Haley was waiting for somebody to set a pick. It never came.
came. The defense stuck on the Sally's uh, off ball guys with like glue and just nothing there for Jack Brown to do with the ball. And so Aldridge has it on the right wing. He gets it up top to Davis, who's gotten to the rim successfully all four times he's tried. He gets it over to Aldridge in the right corner. They get it to Farley back up top. Man to man defense for the Sal's. Maccabee has it for the Quakers. He gets it over to Aldridge, who's got those three fouls. Davis at the top of the key, swings it over to Farley. Acolo's trying to post up against Paul Brown, and instead Farley drives in, puts it high off, nothing but air. And they blew the whistle, and they're going to say it's going to stay Quakers' ball. Not sure whether it got tipped by Sally's and went get, up into the cable, maybe. I think that's what happened after Jack Brown ticked it. It either hit near the back of the, the, the rim or the cable, but doesn't remain friend's ball, but about an outstanding job by Sally's defense. Suffocating would be the word to it use really there. It really is. <laughs> Davis Which would describe the heat in this gym, yeah, by the way. That's true, too. It is rather warm. for Now it's warmer outside. But <laughs> Aldridge gets double teamed. A nice dish to McAbee. Drives in looking for the foul. Missed the layup. Vaughn on the other end. Works it ahead to Paul Brown who catches. And he gets it right back underneath the Vaughn. Goes through his hands right to Jack Brown. Jack Brown in the paint. Little jumper's good. Jack Brown, nice little Johnny on the spot move there. He was standing at the left elbow when the ball came through the lane. Got tipped right to him. Saw enough there. Just popped in the opening, gets the easy two points. So another 10-point lead. Sally says led for, by that many three times. Davis with a turnaround jumper in the lane is short, and Paul Brown comes down with it. So Sally's, as we approach the halfway mark of this fourth quarter, 4.22 to play. Sally's with a 10-point lead, and this is where you usually see a Sally's team settle for nothing but layups. Vaughn inside. He's got his man underneath in the low post. Had a layup. Missed it. Got his own rebound. Puts it up and in. That's just incredible effort from Darnell Vaughn. He came up under the basket a little too far under the basket. And blocked the, the shot was blocked by the rim. Stayed with it. Picked up his own offensive rebound. Put it in for two. Biggest lead of the night for Sally's. 12 points. 43-31. to 31. We're under four minutes to play here in the game. Wilmington Friends has it moving left to right. Driving in is Aldridge, and he gets called for traveling, and it's going to be a turnover, Sally's ball. And, you know, it's really frustrating. I mean, Aldridge called for a screen at the top of the, the three-point line, but no one came out to help him. I don't know if fatigue's an issue or just frustration, but he decided just to take it himself and gets called for the walk. McCoy checks in. Davis is out. Kalk gets substituted in for as well. It's Cohill who came in for him. Sally's with a 12-point lead, 3.38 to play, moving right to left as we see it. And it looks like they're going to be four content. Corners, it John. almost looks like the <laughs> North Carolina four corners. Mike Wallace has it. He dribbles away from the defense, gets tipped away, and Farley thought it was off the Wallace. Referee disagrees, going to stay Sally's ball. You know, this is something Sally's and St. Mark's both do very well. As much as they get criticized for the style of play, St. Mark's and Sally's now as well, they do a great job of holding the ball away from the opposition, being very smart. Wallace with a 12-point lead, clock on his side, almost at the three-minute mark of this game. He gets it over to Cohill, who's being guarded by Aldridge. They get it over to Vaughn. He's being guarded by Maccabee. Vaughn brings it all the way back to the circle. And now he drives into the lane, puts it up with the left hand. No good. Tipped up by Paul Brown. That's no good. Back into the hands of Vaughn underneath. Gets stripped away by Maccabee into the hands of Aldridge. And a lob to Acolo under the basket. He gets it back out to Maccabee on the right wing. He takes two dribbles in and kicks it over to McCoy. McCoy gets it back out front to Aldridge. Acolo has it, and a nice move inside. Pushes off Wallace. Turnaround jumper, no good, and lands in the hands of Cohill, who hands it off to Wallace and says, slow down. A great job again. Acolo that time probably got away with an offensive foul, lowered his shoulder into the Sally's defender, but missed the shot. Gives Sally's another opportunity. Wallace drives in to Jack Brown. Jack Brown's layup goes off the side of the basket on the baseline. <laughs> Farley with a nice defense there. He picked it right off the backboard. Hands it off to a Debbie. Debbie lays it in and good. Really nice job there by McAbee on the end to come around, take advantage of the fact that Jack Brown was a little frustrated as Miss Layup down the other end, didn't get back in time defensively. McAbee lays it in for two, and we're back to a 10-point game. Good correction. It was McAbee, not a Debbie, as I had said. We have a foul now, 43-33, to back to a 10-point lead, and that foul is going to be... Not sure who they call it. Waiting to see it come up on the scoreboard. Looks like it's going to be against... Miles McCoy, his first, so it's going to stay Sally's ball. Davis has checked back in, and he is in for all. He is in for Aldridge. 
Cohill inbounds to Jack Brown, almost tipped away into the backcourt. Double team, they get it back to Cohill. He kicks it back out to Vaughn, had a wide open three. Instead, he pulls it back out. Under two minutes to play. Sally's with a 10-point lead. Friends has to start thinking about fouling at some point. They need, they need a win to try to get into the playoffs. It's not a guarantee they won't if they don't win this game, but they have one game left against Conrad, so this certainly would be a big win with the points they'd get beating Sally's. And as I say that, Farley ends up with the ball, a three-point attempt from the left wing off the front of the rim. We're going to have a foul underneath, and the foul, I believe, is going to be on Vaughn, and it's going to be a one-and-one one situation, and going to the line is going to be Maccabee. Yeah, on the Sally's end, uh, looked like they were setting Jack Brown up. Uh, Chris Cohill was for a dunk but Brown just not able to get the handle as he ran toward the rim. He was the cutter to the basket from the right side. And again, on this end for the offense, for friends, the frustration continues. They, they get some open looks down low. Guys catch the ball and they're under the basket or they miss the layup. It's just been one of those nights offensively. And one, talk about one of those nights, McAbee misses the front end of the one on one. Aldridge has checked back in. Davis is at 43-33, a 10-point lead, 125 to play. Cohill's got it, being guarded closely by Davis. Paul Brown has it stripped away by Ocolo on the double team there. Him and Davis, very effective. A three-pointer by Aldridge on the left wing is off the front of the rim, and big Paul Brown pulls it down. The senior for Sally's. Cohill has it. He whips it ahead to Vaughn. Vaughn takes two dribbles in and pulls it out. He whips it over to Cohill. He doesn't want to shoot either. The sign of a well-coached team. I love team. that, John. Uh, Vaughn had a wide open ride to the basket for a layup. Instead, he kicks it back out. They burn another 10, 15 seconds off the clock and force friends to foul. And Sally's, for the most part, is a good free throw shooting team. So when, if and when they do get to the line, it's something Brendan Hale is very comfortable with his team putting the game away at the free throw line. McKenzie is in. McAbee's out. McKenzie's in because of his quickness to try to get a foul here. They've got no choice. They still got – they don't have any more fouls to give. That was the last one. A lob to Vaughn. He catches it on the low right block, and instead of trying to go in for a hard layup, brings it back out. And just as we talked about, he is fouled by McKenzie. It's going to be his first, and it's going to send Vaughn to the line. Vaughn has some great hands. He's really ripped down some boards that didn't look like they were coming to him in the lane. He's gone up and snagged some passes that have gotten past some other players tonight. Again, it's really hot in this gym. I'm sure the hands are slippery. We saw a lot of red faces out on the floor. So uh, it's been a night where there's been a ton of substitutions, probably partly because of, of how hot it is in here. But Sally's has done a really nice job handling everything from start to finish. Maccabee, who leads friends with 10 points, is going to check back in for McKenzie so that when they do get the ball, he is in on the offensive side. Vaughn is one for one from the free throw line as he gets ready to shoot the first of the one and one here. Shot is up and nothing but the bottom of the net. So two for two now and 10 points for Darnell Vaughn, two over his season average to give Sally's an 11 point lead, 44 to 33 with 51 seconds left to play. Don't forget coming up after the game, it's the American Spirit Federal Credit Union post game show. American Spirit Federal Credit Union with locations in Newark, Middletown and Dover. Visit American Spirit. 44-33, Sal's with the lead over Wilmington Friends. Vaughn's shot, second shot is up and rattles around and out. So under 50 seconds left to play. Farley has it. He gets it over to McAbee. McAbee tries to drive in, does, and fouled, and it's good. Wow, I, they called Paul Brown for the foul. Brown touched him around the elbow. So unless McAbee is Michael Jordan, I'm not really <laughs> sure how he got the continuation there. But uh, – they really let that continuation go a long way. As I said, Brown uh, fouled him around the foul line. McAbee continued on and laid it up and in with the finger roll. So nice job by McAbee. Foul shot is up and good. So one of two from the free throw line tonight for McAbee. That is his 13th point. He leads friends in scoring. 44 to 36. 42 seconds left. Wallace has it. He gets it back to Coho and out of bounds. Nice defense there by Farley under the basket to tip away the pass from Wallace to Cohill. Out of bounds and off Cohill going to be friend's ball. That was a great job by Davis to force Sally's to get rid of the ball. And then you're right by Farley to force the turnover on Cohill. Aldridge, who's a three-point threat, has it. Farley also a three-point threat. That launches from the left arc, misses hard off, and getting a rebound as McAbee puts it up strong. No foul, and coming away with it is Wallace, and he is fouled on the floor, and he's going to head to the other end and shoot a one and one. Again, you know, during that possession, we saw Farley with a wide open three pointer as he came off a screen and just 
nothing doing. It's just bon one of those nights. And when you shoot, you're a shooter like Farley. I said before the game that uh, Jack Brown is one of the better confidence shooters I've seen. Farley sort of works in sort of the same manner. He's got a lot of confidence in his shot. He keeps hoisting him up there. Just hasn't been one of those nights. But, uh, you know, they still have a chance to get in. You never know what's going to happen one way or another. It's not looking like this is going to go their way, but this isn't it for them. Wallace makes the first of the one and one. He now has doubled his season average with 13 points. Checking in for friends is Miles McCoy. He's going to check in for Quentin Maccabee with 45-36 lead, 26.9 seconds left to play here in the fourth quarter. Wallace's second shot is up. And good. So 14 points on the night, and they extend their lead to 46-36. Friends with the ball inside to Wakolo, lays it in, and good. That was a great pass from William Davis out front. You know, he doesn't play a ton. In the six games I watched, he didn't get a ton of playing time, but he has really done a lot tonight. The sophomore guard uh, with the injury uh, to, to one of their players, and uh, to Biscrone, excuse me, and with the foul trouble uh, with Acolo and Aldridge, he's done a really nice job, Davis, all night. That time a beautiful pass inside to set up the two, and with 20 seconds left, not out of the question, most likely not going to happen, but you love friends to keep fighting. 46-38, Sally's will have the ball coming out of the timeout, 20.5 seconds left to play. If you're tuned into this game, it means that most likely you're a high school basketball fan. Well, next Friday, February 23rd, six Special Olympics Unified Basketball teams are going to square off in the first ever DIAA, SODE, Unified Basketball Showcase at Middletown High School. Caesar Rodney and Newark Charter tip off at 4, followed by Kay Penlopen and McCain at 5.30. And then in the nightcap, it's Apoquinimic and Middletown. These unified teams are made up of high school student athletes with and without disabilities, and all six teams have been playing regular season games over the past two months. If you if you can't make it to the game, be sure to tune in to the 302 Sports live stream. 302 Sports has donated the production and broadcast costs to Special Olympics so that they can stream this exciting event live. Once again, it's the DIAA SODE Unified Basketball Showcase shooting for acceptance on Friday, February 23rd, starting at 4 o'clock. 20.5 seconds to go. Cohill is inbounding underneath his own basket to our right. He gets it into Vaughn, who is fouled immediately by Maccabee, and Vaughn will go to the foul line. Still only a one-and-one. One. They're one foul away from the double bonus. And for now, like we said, for Sally's, it comes down to hitting their free throws. Historically, they're a very good free throw shooting team. It's something that Brennan Haley has always emphasized. Uh, and you look at you know, one of his pupils is Dante DiVincenzo, who's shooting around 87, 88 percent from the free throw line for Villanova now. So it's something that's really emphasizing this program. And you get to the end of games, they put them away at the free throw line. And so he is two of three from the line tonight, getting set to make his first or take his first of the one-on-one -on -one situation. No Sally's guys on the lane. Everybody is back on defense as Fawn makes the first to extend the lead to 47 to 38. 19.5 seconds left to play. Miles McCoy has checked back in for the Quakers, as has Aldridge. Kind of a good free throw shooter. We can go from 100 miles an hour to nothing. Stop, set yourself up at the free throw line, and nail both of them as Vaughn just did. Second one hits the front of the rim, and then the backboard and falls in. 48 to 38, and Friends turns it over on the dribble. A pat on the back there of Jack Brown, the Farley. They both pretty much know this one is over. 14.5 seconds left to play. Friends still in a full court man-to-man -man press. Never know when you're going to need to use this, so you no. might as well practice it. They do get it in. Wallace has it. Friends is just going to let him dribble the ball out. Under 10 to play here at Wilmington Friends. Wallace is going to dribble it out. A 48-38 victory for the Silesia Adam Salves over Wilmington Friends. So a disappointing loss here at home for Friends. Sets up an almost must-win situation against Conrad on Tuesday for them to have any shot. It really does. I mean, Conrad's given a couple teams some trouble, especially in the first half. They gave Caravel a run for their money, but – all in all, it should be a game that friends should win. It would get them to 13-7 on the season. The question then becomes the all-important point index. Will that be enough? And as you said at the beginning of the game, if you're a team, you never want to see this Salesianum team. Boy, they didn't have it offensively tonight, but that defense, it, it saves you. I mean, that was just a championship performance on defense from the Sals tonight. All right, coming up next, it's the American Spirit Federal Credit Union post game show right back here to Wilmington Friends School. Your final score, Salesianum 48 Wilmington Friends 38, you've been listening to the High School Basketball Game of the Week on Fox Sports 1290 and watching it live on 302 Sports. People's Plaza.
Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements. School Silesianum heading home with a 48-38 victory over the Friends, a game that Sally's led pretty much from start to finish once they took a 4-2 to two lead at the end of the uh, second quarter or halftime. It was 23-20. to 20. They built that lead to 35-27 to 27 at the end of the third quarter, led by as many as 12 in the fourth quarter before putting it away. 48 to 38 to move to 12 and 5 on the season. Wilmington Friends is now 12 and 7. Sally's has two games left. Friends has the one game left. We'll talk more about that later on in the post game show here. The game lasted one hour and 20 minutes. Let's recap your scoring here. Sally's was led by Mike Wallace, 14 points, more than double his season average. He had an impressive nine points in the second half, 12 points for Darnell Vaughn, 11 points for Paul Brown. Jack Brown, you want to say held to eight points because he came in averaging 12, only had two three-pointers, and then a deuce to get to his eight points. Two points for Luke Pastore and one for Brett Penchy, both off the bench. For Wilmington Friends, they were led by Quentin McAbee, 13 points well above his three-point per game average. Max Acola was one point below his season average with 12 points. Five points for William Davis off the bench, four for Miles McCoy and Tim Farley with two. And, of course, they were playing. Friends was without their starting forward, Carlin Basgrone, who was out with a leg injury. We wish him the best, and hopefully he'll be back for that Conrad game. Marty, your thoughts on the game? You know, I think when, when coaches are talking to their team about playing defense, one of the things they try to say is, look, offensively you're not always going to have a great night. Sometimes you may need to rely on the defense to carry you. And I think for Brendan Haley, that's exactly what he got out of his squad tonight. When they all go watch this tape, they're going to see a team that really struggled offensively against Against his friend's defense. They also missed a lot of open shots, but their defense carried the day for them. They never quit defensively. Uh, the, the intensity was there from start to finish. For friends, I think there was some positives coming out of this. You know, William Davis, the sophomore guard, got a ton of playing time because of the injury to Best Grown and the foul trouble with uh, Aldridge and Acolo. So I think he should, you know, the fact he drove the lane three, three, four, five times in that second half. He didn't always come up with anything, but just the fact that he was trying to get something going and trying to open things up in the middle a little bit. They've still, you know, Miles McCoy is a sophomore for this team. McKenzie's a junior. Uh, you know, they've got some weapons on this team. And who knows, if they beat Conrad and some teams down the bottom of the bubble start to fall off a little bit, you know, maybe Friends sneaks in there. And I, I'll tell you, as a first-round opponent, I'm not sure Friends is somebody you want to see. They play very good defense, and they're a very deep team. And they're very well coached. They don't make very. a lot of foolish mistakes. No. And in the state tournament, it seems that the teams, the teams that win are the teams that make the fewest right. mistakes, not necessarily that can score the most points and run up and down the floor the fastest. The thing that impressed me the most about Sally's was two nights ago, they beat a very, very solid Mount Pleasant team, another top 10 team, and it was the Brown show, Paul Brown and Jack Brown. Tonight, those two guys were kind of held in check on both ends of the floor, certainly on the offensive yep. end of the floor. Jack Brown only with eight points, held the three in the first half, and Paul Brown with 11 points, which is still an impressive, but he's coming off a 21-point yes. performance in what was, everybody said, the best game of his high school career. They both had solid games, but when you don't have your best game, when you got two other guys in Darnell Vaughn and Mike Wallace who can yep. step up and give you a great game. Wallace came in averaging only six points a game, went home with 14, Vaughn averaging eight, went home with 12. And so that's what impressed me about this Sally's team because the other thing that's important when you head into the state tournament is that you have guys who can step up when your big players either are either off or in foul trouble or sometimes injured, and that's exactly what Sally's did. All right, when we come back, we'll announce our crown trophy player of the game and talk about next week's games for these two teams as well as our final regular season game here on Fox Sports 1290. Once again, your final score, Silesian and 48. Wilmington Friends 38, you're listening to the High School Basketball Game of the Week on Fox Sports 1290 and watching it live on 302 Sports.
And Sally's now at 12-5, and five, a short tournament team. Question is whether or not they are going to be uh, have a that coveted first round by Wilmington Friends 12-7. and seven. And as Chris Leffler told me just earlier today, they're a team that's on the bubble. And probably it's safe to say they'd have to beat Conrad to have I a agree. shot to get in at this point. All right, it's time to announce our crown trophy player of the game. Crown Trophy in Glasgow and Wilmington have always been proud supporters of Fox Sports 1290 and the student athletes in the state of Delaware. Visit Crown Trophy for all the best in trophies and make sure to check out their varsity letter sports balls. Continuing with the Crown Trophy tradition, each player of the game this season will win a customized Crown Trophy award plaque and the school will receive one as well for its trophy case. Visit crowntrophy.com. Marty, the floor is yours. We talked about Sally's, the struggles offensively. Jack Brown, Paul Brown, 19 points combined tonight, a little off their averages for the season. They both continued to play good defense, but Sally's did need to find offense in other places. And as you talked about in the state tournament teams, you're going to have your key guys guarded. I mean, Jack Brown is going to draw the other team's best defender in the state tournament. You're going to need somebody to step up. And tonight, Darnell Vaughn and Mike Wallace were the two guys that did that. Darnell Vaughn came up with some big rebounds. He had a couple nice assists, 12 points. But Mike Wallace, to me, more than anybody out on the perimeter with Jack Brown struggling offensively, Mike Wallace kind of kept everything calmed down. We even talked about the one time where he kind of uh, got his uh, got Jack Brown and pulled him away from a referee. <laughs> Jack uh, lost his temper a little bit. So he kind of Mike Wallace, the senior, took charge out there, came up with 14 big points, eight above his average, came in averaging about eight, uh, five assists a game. You and I are almost certain he came in around there tonight he did a really nice job he had a couple rebounds as well but just overall running the offense and picking up the slack so for those reasons the senior mike wallace is our crown trophy player of the game all right crown trophy will get mike a plaque for his uh home and one for the school showcase uh trophy case as well plenty of trophies in that Silesiana yes. case uh, a lot of, <laughs> a a lot of them say state champion <laughs> on them and this will be added to that one so congratulations to mike wallace senior guard at Silesiana. All right, both of these teams still have games left. Wilmington Friends is going to wrap up its regular season on Tuesday here at home against Conrad. Silesiana has two games left on the schedule. They host number three, Sussex Tech, on Saturday night. That's going to be a great one before they wrap up their regular season on Tuesday at Concord High School, which has become pretty much an annual tradition for those two schools to play each other in each of their last games. For Sally's, it might be where they need to win to get that first round by, depending on how it goes uh, Saturday night at Sussex. And our partners at 302 will have that game on Saturday night. So make sure you tune in. I'll be watching, that's for sure. So So. All righty, our next Fox Sports 1290 broadcast is this coming Tuesday when we head to William Penn High for a matchup between two top ten teams as the number four Colonials host the number two Smyrna Eagles. William Penn got beat soundly by Howard earlier tonight. So, again, William Penn's going to be in, but they're going to be battling possibly for a first-round bye or, even if not, jockeying for that seeding position. So it's going to be a big one there between the number four Colonials and number two Smyrna Eagles. Tip-off of that one is 515. We'll be on the air at five with the iHeartRadio pregame show. That's going to do it for this evening from Wilmington, Delaware. Thanks to our producer back in the studio, Ronnie Vickers, for keeping us up and running on the radio side, and to the crew of 302 Sports here on site producing the live stream. For Marty Sheehan, I'm John Busby. Once again, your final score, Silesian 48, Wilmington Friends 38. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, good night from Wilmington Friends School.